Hi, my name is Tony and in this video I'm gonna teach you how to make a dope kit bag like this one. Also, stay with me till the end to find out who won this pricking iron set I got from Abbey, England. All right, one of you guys will get this sent to their home address. Before you start your project, consider very carefully what leather you will be using for your project. In my case, I use some six ounces latigo leather for the pipe details and for the connecting piece that connects the zipper piece to the side of the bag, which was um, a beautiful, beautiful chrome town leather, five ounces with um, a very nice wax finish to it beautiful once you've decided on the leather you're gonna be using go ahead and open your pattern files using adobe reader free to use free to download and make sure actual size is checked the first page of any pattern will contain a sizing diagram this will help you make sure the pattern printed at actual size make sure the proportions are okay and you have measurements in both centimeters and inches all right this may not be very important if you decide to make a bag or a case like this one or whatever else. but if you let's say want to make a hat or if you want to make something that requires sizing a pair of slippers i don't know a vest then it is quite important that your pattern printed at the correct size. Some of the pattern pieces are too large for one single page. So they will be spread over two, three, four, five, even six pages for the larger items. Go ahead and cut the paper along the dotted line that has the scissor symbol. find the matching side and join them together. Make sure the scissors match and you see both halves. This is very important. Now you can go ahead and cut all the patterns out of the leather. At this stage, you don't really have to cut precisely on the black line. You can leave a little bit off. Some of the pattern pieces will have some very important markings on them. These will help you on a later stage of our build. After you have all the pieces cut out of the paper, you can go ahead and attach them to the leather you're gonna be using. For this, I recommend you use regular masking tape you can find at any hardware store. Now it's time to punch every single stitching hole. Be patient, do not rush at this stage because it will determine how straight your stitching will be later. I use 1.5 round millimeter hole puncher. A link to this particular tool and other recommended tools I use on a daily basis in the video description. What? You're a chisel prong guy? Uh, you don't like uh, single punches? That's fine. The pattern will work with these type of tools as well. Just make sure the spacing on your tool is at six millimeters. But if you like uh, round hole punches like I do, I recommend a set of Cinebrooks uh, punchers, which are perfect 
for long straight line. When you get to those curves, your single puncher will still be your best friend. Also, when you use this tool, expect to hit the hole puncher much harder so all the prongs go through the layers of leather. More noise, there's gonna be more noise. And also, this set is not exactly cheap. Once you finish punching all 20 holes, okay, maybe there's more than 20, maybe there's 30, I don't know, I, I never count. I never count. You can go ahead and cut the leather. Once more, take your time. Be very, very careful when you're cutting the leather because any slip, any wrong cut can ruin your whole piece. This is a very good tool, almost perfect. I got some Tandy leather. It's perfect for round corners where your regular blade um, will not be as efficient. Now repeat the same process to punch and cut out every other piece needed for uh, your design. Like I said earlier, for connecting the, the main two pieces of uh, this DOP kit, I used um, six ounces Latigo leather, which is a mix of vegetable and chrome tan. As some of you probably know by now, recently we acquired the uh, services of Professor Tony, who is kind enough to come over and um, share a little bit of his uh, wisdom in his own way. Just be patient with him. We paid him in advance, so I, I, I don't have a choice. He has to be here. Whoa, we're using Q-tips now. Anyway, a lot of you. Want to know how much they should get paid? What about the hell they making? Really? Are you that confident? Anybody should pay anything for whatever you just made? I mean, really? Well, let me break this to you. You should be happy to get whatever you paid for the materials. Should be lucky, lucky. You're an amateur. Breaking even is the best you can hope for. Oh, what? You're a pro. Oh. Excuse me, Mr. Pro, asking other people how much they should get paid for whatever they making. Excuse me. Tell you what. You telling the customer how much they have to pay. You don't ask them, you don't ask your mom and dad, you don't ask me. You should know that by now. And uh, why are you asking? Because nobody's buying anything. Maybe you're asking too much. How about charging less? 
Do you ever think about that? Lower your prices. Oh, what? You're selling too much. You can't keep up. Excuse me. How about you raise your price in this case, huh? Yeah, you're gonna lose a couple of customers, but the rest are gonna pay you more. You know what that means? It means you're gonna be making more money, working less. No, I mean, that's what we all want. That's what I want. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, what? What else? That's, that's it. Let's just turn, turn, the, turn the camera off. I'm done, I'm done. What? Well, I, I kind of agree with him, to be honest. If you have a better answer to his question, he would love to hear it. Just leave a comment below and um, I'll read it to him. Now, there you have it, all the pieces needed to finish uh, your design. Note, the pattern comes with a few other designs for your sides over here. So you can choose whatever, whatever design you want that is available and uh, personalize this your own way. This narrow strip will be the connecting piece between the main body of this case and the zipper piece. Talking about zippers, let's go ahead and attach ours. You will need a zipper about 15 and a half inches for the large bag or 12 inches for the small one. I have a much larger zipper available, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim this to the exact size I need. Just cut it to the desired length. Make sure you melt those ends so it doesn't come undone and you're good to go. Now, it's always a good idea to glue the zipper on the piece of leather. So um, you can go ahead and use one of these uh, disposable syringes and apply the glue nice and evenly with a minimum of mess afterwards. You're gonna need to leave this dry a few hours. So meanwhile, you can go ahead and uh, start on the details that you've chosen for the size of the bag. Uh, go ahead and uh, attach those next. I used one millimeter waxed thread for my build.
Now we can get back to the zipper and we need to punch the stitching holes into the zipper itself. If you want to avoid those waves that tend to appear when you stitch the zipper, make sure you don't pull too hard because that's exactly what will cause those ripples to appear. Next, we need to attach this whole piece to the connecting strip. It is very important you start stitching from the points marked on the pattern. After a couple of stitches, place your leather pieces flat on your work desk, like I do here, and check three things. First, make sure the longer sides of this rectangular piece are perpendicular to the zipper piece. Number two, make sure you're actually stitching the inside of the rectangular to the zipper piece, okay? The inside, this is very important. Otherwise, the holes won't match and you have to undo and restitch. And lastly, make sure the flesh side of this strip is facing up. When you are done, you should be looking at something like this. If the leather you use allows it, try and bend the zipper piece inwards a little like I do here. You can now attach it to the sides. I recommend using a few paper clips to hold it in place. The positioning is very easy because the corners will have to match exactly um, the other piece.
go ahead and do this stitch all the way around. Once you are done, if you want to even the edges, go ahead and do just that. This is how I do it. First, I use a uh, Dremel with a, with a rough hand to even everything out. Afterwards, I bevel the sharp edges. Use a wood burnisher and then finish it with an acrylic edge paint. This will prevent the water and moisture from going inside your lead. There you have it, your bag is finished. It was, it was very easy, very well done. I am very proud of you. And um, let's go ahead and announce the winner for the Abbey England pricking ironing set. And I've read all your comments and I picked this one is a winner. I like this comment the best. This guy gets it. Just like that. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and um, ship this to our lucky winner as soon as I can. I'm sorry you didn't win, but if you don't want to miss out on our next competition or our next prize, go ahead and uh, click that subscribe button. Click the notification bell. So you are the first to be notified as soon as we release something else. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, wash your hands, wear a mask, be safe. Peace.